This is absolutely crazy. Liverpool have been offered massive money for Jordan Henderson and Fabinho. And both players have been offered contracts, which is absolutely crazy. In this video, I'm going to talk about where this leaves Liverpool if they were to sell Jordan Henderson and Fabinho. I don't think many Liverpool fans were thinking of that at the start of the summer. And of course, uh, the individual contracts that are being rumoured for both players and where it leaves those two players. They're massive names in the footballing world to be joining Saudi Arabia. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe. We'd really appreciate it. Liverpool will be a major, major force if they get these two deals over the line. Because Jordan Henderson and Fabinho, whatever you say about them, they're probably at the wrong age to carry on the, the kind of Jurgen Klopp 2.0 transformation that is needed at Liverpool. I think Jurgen Klopp needs fresh legs. And I, I think Henderson's a lot closer to where I think Klopp would need him to be. But what I saw from Fabinho last season was really worrying. Because I think there's an argument he was the best defensive midfielder in the world for a couple of seasons for Liverpool. And he fell off. Whether that's down to injuries, look at Kante. It's a hard position to play defensive midfielder. It's very combative and physical and draining. So... Liverpool next season will be a major force if they get these two players off their books with all due respect to both of them and they can invest in a Lavia, in a Chouameni. We'll talk about that later in the video. Let's just start off with Jordan Henderson. He's been one of the most important players to ever play for Liverpool. He's been the captain of the side during uh, one of the bleakest times of their history in terms of their domestic form of winning the league. 30 years for a side like Liverpool to not win the league is absolutely crazy. And he lifted the Premier League behind closed doors, but it was still a Premier League. Champions League, FA Cup, League Cup winner. The way he applied himself in midfield, the way he arrived as a kind of player that they tried to, they wanted to get rid of after a couple of seasons. Didn't quite work for, I think it was Brendan Rodgers. Um, of course... And even Fulham were linked to loaning him. And he worked hard. He came in. He, he has quality as well. He's a very, very good midfielder on his day. He's, he's a very good passer of the ball. He's got a good goal on him. A yeah, good goal in him every now and then, of course, as well. So Jordan Henderson has this heritage at Liverpool. He's, a, he's an icon. He's a legend. And then he's been offered seven times his salary to join the Saudi Arabian League. It's absolutely crazy. Now, because of all that narrative that I've just explained, I do think there's a world where he leaves, and he, he, I think he leaves with his, he his head held high. I think for Liverpool to get back to where they were, they need a two, three, four-year spell. Um, and I think by that time, he'll be at the wrong age to be a, a hard-working, pressing midfielder. Look at someone like Lavia that they've been linked with. Look at McAllister, players in their 20s that can go for three, four, five years and absolutely go at it flat out. Jordan Henderson, major injury, and suddenly it's like a year at a time before you're back to your best. That's just how it is at the age of 30 plus. He still applies himself very well. Of course, we've got those pictures of him working out, looking leaner than ever, and he's a fantastic professional. I actually think if he stays at Liverpool, he'd still be a massive part of the squad. It's not like he's 40 and he's right in, at the end of his career and he's getting 12 games a season. He could be a massive part for Liverpool. So we have to talk about the transfer itself. £700,000 for Jordan Henderson and what are Saudi Arabia getting? They're getting someone that is a, a still of a very, very high level. One of Liverpool's better players last season, there's no question about it. A player that was massively important for Gareth Southgate's England setup, getting to the, the, the World Cup semi-finals in particular. He was, he was fantastic in that game, uh, in that tournament. So Saudi Arabia getting a guy that is an icon. I think getting an English player is big for football uh, in that country. Um, it always draws eyes, especially a Liverpool legend. And if he's playing with Steven Gerrard as manager, that is a massive coup. It's a massive coup. It might be one of the biggest signings they've ever made. And Benzema's there, Ronaldo's there. Henderson's probably number three for me in terms of uh, the iconography of the move, how big it is for the league, the optics of it. It's absolutely incredible. There's no question about it. That would be the one that I'm sitting there thinking, I think Liverpool would miss him slightly more. 700 grand a week. People are talking about, you know, it's life-changing money and all that. Well, he's already on life-changing money. If you're a footballer and you're in 10 grand a week, you're on life-changing money. So he's already earning life-changing money. It's his, his, it's his responsibility to make the fair enough decision for his family. Of course, there will be question marks from certain supporter groups based on, you know, his political beliefs. Move in there. That will be a, a debate he'll have to decide about. But on a footballing level, fair play to the guy. He deserves the contract that he's been offered. That's my take. Fabinho, on the other hand, is a big... Again, it's another massive move for the Saudi Arabian League. 
It's, it's a massive name. He's one of the best defensive midfielders of his generation. But I think he's the one that I, I'd be gassed about getting 40 million for Fabinho. Wow. I'd be I'd be shoving him out. I'd be get I'd be doing the Ben Johnny high red that thing, shoving him on a plane, shoving him on a private jet, getting him on one of those tourist little little get him on the, the seaside donkey. Get ride him across Europe, get him into Saudi Arabia, honest to God, because Fabinho last season I thought was really, really poor. And I'm not trying to shit on Liverpool. I saw little flickers of certain players. You know, even Trent at the back end of last season. You know, Liverpool underperformed massively. I thought Fabinho was a, the root cause of a lot of it. Obviously, he had injuries here and there as well, of course. But we have to be real and say, if you get £40 million for Fabinho, you bring in Lavia, that secures the future of Liverpool's midfield for the next five to ten years. Him, McAllister, then you've got Curtis Jones, Harvey Elliott. Uh, two fantastic players, maybe another name. We have to talk about someone like Chouameni. Obviously not massively loved at Real Madrid. Um, maybe he's got even more to compete with now that Jude Bellingham is there. Maybe Real Madrid are thinking, let's get some money in so we can get Mbappe. Potent potentially that happens this summer. So if you go and let Chouameni go, there's only a couple of clubs that would want him. Look, the cities of the world, Chelsea's, I don't think, I think Chelsea should go for someone like Chouameni, but I don't think they will. They've not been linked. The Liverpool were last summer. They've got an understanding of who they want, why they wanted him. He went to Real Madrid. It didn't work. Bring him in. He's exactly what they need. He's got the physicality. He's actually so good on the ball. He's so good on the ball. And he's got the eye for the goal. We saw that goal against, uh, against England for France in the World Cup as well. So he's got the prowess to be a very, very, very good midfielder for Liverpool. And suddenly, Lavia as well, who was one of the most impressive players in the whole of the league last season, pound for pound. Of course, playing for Southampton is hard. But his energy, his legs, City Academy, he's giving me a good, good player. So Liverpool next season could end up breaking even or maybe having to spend an extra 20 mil if you spend 60 million on, on Chouameni, um, an extra 30, 40 on Lavia. And then you've got Fabinho out the door for 40 Henderson out the door for whatever that is. I can't quite think what that will be based on his contract, but getting him off the wages, for example. And then you can start afresh without, of you know, the issue for Liverpool is you need takers for, for, for these players. I don't think you're getting the interest from Juventus, from Bayern Munich for these players, PSG, but you are from Saudi Arabia. It's a get out of free jail card. And it allows Liverpool to transition a lot quicker than they might have been able to with financial constraints that they do have compared to the City, PSG, Real Madrid, etc. It's very interesting. I think Liverpool will be a major, major force next season. I think they're going to absolutely be rejuvenated. I think they're going to look at how Arsenal... I think Liverpool are better than Arsenal. I think they've got a better squad. I think they'll look at Arsenal and think, we wouldn't have bottled that 247 days. We know how, how it is to win the league against City how to win the Champions League, how to smash City in the Champions League. That's what they'll be thinking. And Jurgen Klopp's the man to do it. I think they'll be a major force next season. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe. We'd really appreciate it. It's a new dawn for Liverpool Football Club because of the Saudi Arabian Pro League.